The cardinal error is walking the opposite pitcher, and he does it. One of five free passes. After a walk to Dykstra, John Kruk lifts it to left. Ron Gann is there. Can he see it? No, he can't. It's a two-base error. And Rivera is in. It's two zip to the seventh. And the Braves bullpen in for damage control. They create more than they control. Greg McMichael throws it into center. Dykstra moving up. It's 3-1. Bases loaded. Mark Wallers walks Inky. Millet is in. The Braves walk 10. Two with the bases loaded. It's 4-1. Next batter, Jim Eisenreich. He's on fire. Two come across. Eisenreich with a 13-game hitting streak. The Phil scores six in the seventh and win it by a score of 8-3. to three. In that inning, the Phils send 12 to the plate. They got five walks and three hits off. Rada and Destrada does the job finding room up the middle. That hit scores Alex Arias, 1-0. Marlins top of the second tied at one, though. One out, Orocha at the plate. His first major league hit in 19 at bats. A complete game came off Ryan Bowen. Two runs come in, 3-1 Cardinals. Top of the fifth, two out, 3-2 Cardinals, Craig Jeffries. Comes through off Bowen. Jeffries hitting over 3-12, scoring Bernard Gilkey. 4-2 cards. Bottom of the eighth, Lee Smith in to close it out, facing Benito Santiago, and he strikes him out. Marlins, though, would have another chance. Bottom of the ninth, cards up by one, two out. Arrested Estrada hits the first pitch and grounds out to end the game. Cardinals hang on, 4-3, close to 38,000 got to see and cheer Rene Arocha. The cards win one for Rene, despite committing three errors. After the game, by the way, St. Louis plays Ray Langford on the 15-day DL with a wrist injury. Sending it Will Cordero's way, and Cordero sends it to I don't know who. That's an E6, a run scored on the plate. Coleman 0 for 4 at the plate, but he was perfect on the base paths. Yes, Dennis Martinez on the mound. Coleman stealing second on him and on Darren Fletcher. That's the first steal for Vince. On the next pitch, Coleman will steal third. Fletcher doesn't even bother on that one. Bottom of the fifth, Coleman walks into the second, and then the weak, weak throw by Fletcher, which, by the way, Fletcher ranks worse in the NL in throwing out runners. Bottom of the seventh, Coleman, the steal. Fletcher's throw, nowhere. That's number four. But the Expos did take control in this game. Just give him a chance. Larry Walker with a two-run home run off Frank Tanana. Montreal went on to win this game 4-3. And needless to say, Vince Coleman was stranded at third three times in this game. Dennis Martinez winning his sixth straight decision. But by the way, the Expos picked up righty Tim Scott from San Diego in exchange for once a major leaguer at the moment a minor leaguer, Arky Cianfranco. Cubs up 1-0 early in Pittsburgh. But hold on, Sean Bosky was pitching for Chicago, and he's never beaten the Pirates, and Jeff King must have known that because he triples in Orlando Merced, and the game is tied at one. Then Bosky throwing the wild pitch, and that brought home King. It's 2-1. Bucko still in the second. Don Slot roping it down the line. One of three hits for Slot. Lonnie Smith hustling around all the way from first will score. Pirates with a four-run second. Kill the Cubs, 9-4. to four. Slot with two RBIs. He's now batting 310 since being named the everyday catcher. And as for Jeff King, he's been hitting 432 since being moved out. Big hitting in the Kingdome. Bases were full. Jay Buhner with a bases loaded. It's a grand slam. It's a 5-1 lead, and Buhner was on his Jay way Buhner to a big night. In his next right at bat, Buhner goes to the gap in right. He ends up on second. No RBI in the play, but there is a reason to show you that. Bottom of the fifth, 5-4 Mariners. Ken Griffey had four home runs in four games, make it 5-4. and four. It's 6-4 Seattle. Then it's Jay Buhner. A single. That's his third hit of the night. So he's homered, he's doubled, he's singled. Bottom of the eighth, it's 7-6 A's, and Bill Hasselman takes Goose Gossage out. It's all even at seven. Extra innings, bottom 14. What do you think Buhner does? Well, he's homered, he's doubled, he's singled, he goes off the wall. This good for a triple and the cycle. Buter, the first Mariner to ever hit for the cycle. He is safe. Into extra innings, as I said, we're in the 14th, and Sean Hillegas crosses up Terry Steinbach, so the hero of the night is Jay Buter. The Mariners win it, 8-7. Buter goes four for seven, his 15th home run. As I said, the first Mariner to hit for the cycle First batter of the game is Kenny Lofton. He goes to right. Brunanski is back there. It's in the sun. And watch what happens. He has trouble handling it. Lofton, one of the league's fastest, gets the green light to go home. Here comes Lofton. Here's the throw. And he is safe. Originally ruled an inside the park home run. Tribe up one zip. To the seventh, it's one all. Paul Sorrento right up the gut. Kirby comes in, and the Indians are up two to one. 
Bill Wegman falls to 4-12, and 12, and that'll bum out any pitcher. 3-1 to one the final. Lofton's triple was originally ruled an inside the park home run. The decision was changed one hour after the game when umpire Hank Kozlowski asked Tom Brunanski what happened. He looked to keep his emotions intact while his teammates looked to gain some ground in the AL East. The ground breaking began with that man, Don Mattingly. Two on facing Todd Stottlemyre and gets to him big time with a double up the gap. One of three hits for Mattingly. Two runs come in. That tied the game at two. Oh, and about that other first baseman, John Olrood, handcuffed by Jimmy Keek. He said he didn't try anything special with Olrood. Olrood was 0 for 3 against him. Joe Carter picks up the slack, puts the Blue Jays up front 3 to 2 with his 16th home run of the year. But the Yanks would score two to take the lead. Here in the eighth, though, big play. Steve Howe to face John Olrood with two on and the streak on the line. The natural, the swing, the high chopper. There's Spike Owen, the stunning play into a double play. The streak stopped cold at 26 games. So are the Blue Jays. Yanks win 4-3 and pull within two from the top. The Yankees pounded out 15 hits against five Toronto pitchers. Five of those hits were doubles. Danny Tartable had one of those doubles. He totaled three hits. Now, with his offer, John Olrood's average drops to a disgusting 404. His offer came against two lefties, Key and Howe. If you take a look at Olrood's first three full seasons, he was actually batting higher against lefties versus righties. But this season, he's shown his obvious strength is when he's up against righties. That's bad news for Yankee right-hander Scott Kamenicki, who gets to face Olrud on Thursday. Another slugger at mile high and that other 400-plus hitter, Andres Galarraga, makes personal history against the Reds' Tim Pugh. That was his 1,000th career hit. It was his only hit of the game, and it's worth keeping the ball for. Bottom of the third, Vinny Castilla, your hitting hero. That's what I said, Vinny Castilla. Going deep off Pugh, Castilla and Danny Schaefer combined for 10 RBIs. Coming in, these two guys just had 16. Castilla wasn't done yet, this time against Greg Catteray. Going deep again in the seventh inning, his second homer of the game. He had just three coming in. Rockies roll 15 to 5 over Cincy. That's 28 runs in their last two games for the Rocks, who have won eight of their 12 games on that homestand. Jeff Parrott, a winner in his first start in three years. Kevin Mitchell extending his hitting streak to a career best 17 games. Back to the big cat. Remember when this guy actually struggled at the plate? He was the league leader in strikeouts, fanning once every four at bats. Fast forward to this sensational season. Galarraga has struck out half. Jay of San Fran, fan one million, he throws out the first ball. Giants up one zip, Bud Black throws a lousy pitch that Phil Plantier loves. Pods up two to one. Robbie Thompson hit two home runs. This, the first off Greg Harris. This is the first multiple home run career, home run game of his career, and Thompson is now hitting 315. Giants win at 6-2. Harris has given up a league high 14 home runs. Giants, as I said, go over the one million market attendance quicker than ever before. And to think, I think they lead 2-1. Doug Drabeck, Eric Karros. It's a solo shot to left. It's his eighth. It's tied at two. Eric Davis, a single to left. Take a look at this. Does Jose Offerman touch third base? Really can't tell from that angle. They say yes. The run scores. Dodgers up 3-2. Who are they? The umpire. Ninth inning, Jim got on for the save. Two men on, one out, Eric Anthony at the plate. He goes deep. If it leaves, it's a three-run home run, and it does. It's enough to make Tommy Lasorda, well, ill. Astros win it 5-3. They do commit three errors, but they do hit home runs. 66 of them. Anderson has seen a lot of high-scoring games as well as low ones. He's won 2,039 of those. One more, he ties Walter Alston for fifth place on the all-time list. Tigers, though, 0-8 at Camden Yards. Plays like this do not help. Mike Moore with the bases loaded throws it away. Jack Voigt is in, and Moore is late to cover the plate when Harold Reynolds slides in. Bottom of the fourth, 3-1 O's. Chris Hoyles. He's got that home run swinging going. There goes another. That's his fourth in three games, and the O's are up by three at 4-1. More Tiger troubles. The pop to center. Lou Whitaker makes the catch, but he feels the pain when Travis Fryman knocks him down. To the eighth, and Cal Ripken, the AL's top all-star vote-getter for shortstops, earned some of those votes. His eighth of the year, the lead is five, and the O's hang on to it. Final was 6-2. This the seventh straight series the Orioles have won. Sutcliffe's first complete game in almost a year, so Sparky stays one win behind Walter Alston. To the traffic jam at the top of the AL West. Top of the first, it's 2-0. Angels and Royals. Kelly Gruber, little bloop to center. So innocent, so effective. 
It's 4 nothing after one. Gruber breaking out of an 0 for 14 slump. Top of the third, his hitting continues. Chris Haney the victim. Gruber's third home run of the year. Angels up seven zip. Hal McRae getting into it again. He was thrown out Tuesday. Hal's got a little streak of his own going. Given the boot on Wednesday as well. 8-7 the final. David Cohn also thrown out. This the second time both have been booted together. Hilly Hathaway gets win number one. Tim Salmon bruised his shoulder and was taken out in the ninth. His status is day to day. White Sox tied at the top with KC heading into Wednesday's action. Roger Pavlik having trouble. Wild pitch and Reigns is on the run to second. Pavlik would load him up and unleash another wild pitch. Reigns running again and he's home. Bottom of the third, it's 2-1 White Sox and the sweet swing of Frank Thomas. Left nothing in the bat rack. Swings harder than John Daly with a one iron. It's a two run shot, his 14th, and the White Sox are up 4 1. Bottom of the sixth, Danny Pasquas heading home. Mike Lavalier lays it down, and DP slides in safe. Sox win it 7 4. It is a sweep for the White Sox. Rangers go home after a 2 8 road trip. Following the game, the guy you just saw, Rangers skipper Kevin Kennedy, said, The best thing I can say about the road trip is that it's over. A numerical look now at how the AL West has become the AL Week and the AL East, the AL Beasts. Comparing the top three in each division, the major offensive categories, all East. An average that's 13 points higher. They also have hit 88 more home runs. With the Rocket on the DL, an opportunity for that guy, Aaron Seeley, his major league debut, facing Winfield. He struck him out. When Winfield made his debut, Seeley was only two years old. To the third, and Aaron is in a little bit of trouble. Two on. Curvy Puckett, the hanging curve, lifts one to left. John Valentin, no, can't hang on. Pagliarulo comes in, it's two to one. Then the Sox give Sealy some support. Greenwell starting to hit the ball to center, and the Zupper, Bob Zupzik, makes it 3-1. Aaron was cruising. Ken Herbeck at the plate, always a threat. Strike three. Chuck Knobloch, another victim. Pat Mears, yet another. Sealy, K's eight, gives up five hits and seven innings of work. Final school was three to one. Sealy celebrates his 23rd birthday on Friday. The Twins have done no celebrating lately, losing nine in a row. Greg Harris gets his first save of the season. We'll have more from the majors later on.